Good afternoon. I am Dr. Carlos Barraquer from the Barraquer Clinic in Bogota, Colombia. And it's a pleasure to be again with you in the Video Refractiva Congress. I want especially to say hello to Dr. Lucio Burato and Dr. Picardo also, old friends of us. Today, we are going to show you corneal surgery. This transmission will not be of cataract. And the surgery we are going to show you is an old technique that has been rebirthed by Dr. Cesar Carriazo. When I say it's an old technique, I want to show you a book that is the journal of the Barraquer Institute of Barcelona of the year 49 of the last past century. And here you will see the first article of Dr. Jose Barraquer on refractive keratoplasty. In this article, he explained for the first time his ideas about what now we call LASIK. And here is the first technique that he used to normalize the anterior corneal curvature in keratoconus. He made a circular resection of tissue of 11 millimeters diameter, then dissected the anterior layers of the cornea, and afterwards sutured back again those layers. Now, Dr. Carriazo has modified this technique using the new technology we have nowadays, and I'm going to leave him with you to explain exactly what is he thinking and how is he doing this new technique that is being called remodeling of the cornea in keratoconus. Thank you. Good afternoon to the audience. First of all, I want to say thank you to Dr. Lucio Burato and Ricardo for the invitation, and Dr. Carmen Barraquer, because uh, we are, it's, it's, a, it's a good opportunity to introduce this uh, new technology. Corneal remodeling is a, a surgical technique to change the curvature of the cornea in keratoconus. We use the femtolaser, we are using the Simmer femtolaser, in order we calculated what is the volume that we need to remove for each case, depending on the severity of the, uh, uh, the patient. We, have, uh, we, we are planning to do two cases. The first surgeon will be Dr. Ernesto Tero, and the second surgeon will be Dr. Angela Gutierrez. Let me show the technique I will to explain in one slide, and we go to the surgical room. This is the Fento laser that we are planning to use. Uh, our surgeon, Dr. Ernesto Otero. The first case, the first case is a patient 21 years old. Here you can see the topography. Um, the patient is a, has a keratometry. This is deep keratometry. We have here 52 in one meridian and the other 49. This is right eye. And the refraction is minus 2 to minus 8 to 13 degree. The visual acuity is 0.2. And the, uh, I will show you what is the our profile that we want to plan to do. This is the our profile. In this case, for example, 
we are planning to do a 270 degree pre-section. The edge of the, the more width uh, resection will be 205 degree. And we don't go to remove tissues in the superior nasal quadrant. In 90 degree, we don't go to touch the cornea. Then uh, the, in the inferior width, we remove 60, 600 micras in 205 degree. Now uh, we are going to the uh, surgical room. Here we are with the Dr. Ernesto Otero. Hello, Ernesto. Buonasera to everyone. Hello. How's everything? So here we're going we're gonna to start the, the procedure. We have already the uh, speculum placed in the eye, and uh, we're going to proceed to do the docking of the uh, femto laser as, uh, as we usually do. So we placed uh, some marks on the eye at 0 and 180 degrees to align the, uh, the, uh, the uh, suction ring onto the eye. So now we're going to proceed. So now we're applying suction. Now the suction is, is okay. We put in water on the eye. So, so we placed already a, a little bit of water in the eye. Uh, the suction is perfect. And now we're going to dock the, uh, the, the femtosecond handpiece into the eye. So now the handpiece is docked. And uh, we can see the image uh, that, uh, of the uh, resection we're going to perform. Now in the screen, you can see the geometrical figure that we are planning to do. This is a resection. You can see here, the, 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 now the, the patient is laid down. Down, you, you see in the positive, because the, the, it's not sitting the patient. And you see here that in the inferior uh, nasal quadrant, we are removing more tissues, 600 micras. Laser, laser. Now we are uh, starting with the resection. This is the, the ablation. You can see how the laser is removing the tissues. In the screen, in the inferior quadrant, you can see the time, 64 seconds. It will take one minute and a little more seconds during the, the uh, take time, the, the resection. And the, in the side, you can see the, 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 the thickness. We are uh, removing 90% of depths, in depths. We don't penetrate the eye. We, we, we leave uh, 100 micron in the posterior stroma. So as you can see, it is uh, very stable. The handpiece uh, uh, really feels very light on the eye. Uh, there's basically no eye movement. You just feel the laser doing the ablation or the resection, and um, it's actually quite simple, very fast, very comfortable for our patient. Our patient is under topical anesthesia, and she's very relaxed, uh, basically uh, feeling very little. We're about to finish, uh, seven more seconds, then we'll remove the suction, and, um, and we'll take the patient to the uh, OR to remove uh, the, the uh, things of course. Mira arriba, mira arriba que le enfoque en el ojo. Try, the, try to, uh, to so, focus the eye. You so we're going to focus on the eye so you can see the resection. Obviously, we'll see it much better under the microscope. Okay. But as you can see, there's the, uh, there's the resection uh, in, in, uh, in which you can, you can basically notice um, what the laser did. Uh, move the patient, uh, scroll the patient to the OR. To place the sutures, uh, do the resection, and, and, and suture the cord. 
Now, let me explain you while Dr. Otero is uh, organizing the stitches of the cornea. The enkeratoconus, we have to understand that in keratoconus, we have a progression increasing the anterior chamber depths, uh, displacing the posterior corneal surface, and pro progressive corneal stiffening, how you can see here in this, this schematic uh, slide. And, but when you have uh, the cornea in this, uh, in this uh, way, and we compare the volume before of keratoconus and after the keratoconus, we have similar volume. This is very important understand, to understand the, the, the surgery. The volume before and after of keratoconus is similar. The corneal, the stromal corneal is there. It's it distribution in, in other way, but it's there inside of the cornea. Then, over surgery, Corneal remodeling consists in removed tissues in the peripheric in this way in order to again give to the cornea new surface. We, we will have a, a new cornea, thin cornea, but a with a similar surface than she had before because the volume that its cornea used to stip is not, now is not in the cornea in this moment. We thrust away. In other way, in other words, we are stretching the cornea. We are doing like something like this one. We are stretching the cornea in one side, and we calculate it for each cases, depending the biometry and, and keratometry. It's similar to carara surgery. When in carara surgery, we calculated the power of the lens of the IOL, follow the biometry and keratometry. In corneal remodeling, we have to look for the keratometry. We have the biometry, and we use the power of uh, crystalline lens, no, no intraocular lens, power of crystalline lens in order to obtain the keratometry. In other words, each cornea is different because it is one patient has more uh, myopic or, or less uh, myopic, we have to change the, the geometrical figures. We modified in each case the gap of the fi fi uh, geometrical feature, the depth, the geometrical figure, and the axis for each patient, depending for each case. This is a schematic is similar, different, different uh, slides to show you that. Now, uh, let me show you, it's ready in the in, in surgical. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me show you the stitches of the cornea. Okay. Now we are in the surgical room with Dr. Otero. He's here. So hello. Now we've uh, we've placed uh, our patient. We put the uh, drapes. I'm going to center the image so you can uh, see it. So as you can see, mira la luz. The uh, resection is uh, already made, uh, and I'm going to show with the Sinsky hook how the laser creates a perfect uh, resection. Muy tranquila, no vamos a hacerlo. So as you can see, it is completely open. There are no tags or anything. And we see it on, on basically both sides. So the resection is per perfectly performed. We have our, our marks that we made 
prior to the procedure, because some of them have been with us. And I'm going to uh, basically open over here. And you, you probably noticed that as I remove the epithelium, or the epithelium side, uh, we have already, so as you can see, basically the cut is a clean cut. So here, we can remove the resection completely. You can basically peel it off from the cornea, which is beautiful, it is a perfect cut. There's a little tag down here, but we could perfectly peel it off from the cornea. You can see the asymmetrical shape. We can see the asymmetrical shape and um, how, how it's a perfect, perfect resection. So now we're going to do a uh, paracentesis to lower the pressure uh, of the eye that will enable us to suture uh, the cornea in a much easier fashion. I'm going to make a little paracentesis over here and just let a little bit of aqueous come out. And that will allow me to start suturing the cornea with good apposition of both uh, edges. So generally what Dr. Carriazo recommends is to start suturing the, 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 the thicker or the widest uh, gap in, this, in, the, in the cornea. And uh, these are, are really, uh, uh, you know, stitches just like a uh, penetrating keratoplasty or a lamellar keratoplasty. So you're going to start suturing at this edge and grasp the cornea. This is the steepest. And we go at 90% of depth. We come out exactly where we want to suture it. And we're going to do a couple of stitches. And once we do a couple of stitches, then uh, we'll, we'll go to the next case. And we'll be back, uh, we'll be back uh, when we're finishing. It's very important to know that the, the depth is 90%. Uh, we don't penetrate the eye, just in the paracentesis in order to decrease the intraocular pressure. But uh, the, surgery, the surgery, the femto, don't penetrate. And it's very important just to, to, to get an apposition of the edges. We want both edges to meet. We don't, we don't want to do, you know, exert too much pressure or too much tightness in the suture. We just want, again, the edges to come together. And, uh, yeah. so now, So now we're going to do a second stitch and we're going to do this one. <coughs> so now we're going to, ellos están bien? So now we're going to start distributing the sutures evenly to, uh, to distribute the forces and achieve a, uh, a perfect apposition of the edges. As I said, what we want, we don't want them overlapping. We want to go 90% of depth. So, uh, so, so the, basically the cornea, uh, uh, the edges fit perfectly. It's very important to say then the, for each keratogonus, the, the geometrical figure is different. The axes are different in order to, the, to, to remold in the cornea in both meridian. Because in keratogonus, each keratogonus is different. So as you can see, here we've got another 
go to that position. It's important to to block the stitch so we can have a good a good good apposition of the edges. There we are. We got it. Uh, generally three passes, then two, and then one. Uh, that'll achieve again a good blockage of the of this future. And and you'll see how they basically start coming together. It is important if you have a gap to resuture it until you get an, an even surface uh corta. An even surface. Mira la luz, por favor. Now we will stop here with the Dr. Otero and come back at the at the end of the surgery. We will continue with the second case now. Now we have the second case. The surgeon will be Dr. Angela Gutierrez, from uh, Chief of the Department of uh, Carrera and Refractive Surgery of the Clinic Barracan Institute. And the patient, the, the patient is uh, 18 years old, is a female, and half a keratoconus grade three. The refraction is minus four, minus six to 90 degree. The keratometry is 57 in 72 degree and 53 in 162 degree. The axial length is uh, 24.17. And this is the topography. You can see that the topography is decentrated, uh, the keratoconus, the conus is uh, inferior and temporal. And let me show you what will be the geometrical figure. This is the profile. We are removing 600 in 300 degree. You see that in this case we change in totally opposite to the other patients. This uh, resection will be in 300 degree. Uh, in the superior quadrant, we don't go to touch the cornea. We don't go to, to do any resection. It's a, this figure is 320 <coughs> degree resection. In the, uh, the anterior patient was 270. In this case, we need to, re to do more resection because this is a patient with high myopic and astigmatism. And then we have to correct the keratoconus, and at the same time, we are trying to correct the myopic and astigmatism. Dr. Angela Gutierrez will be the surgeon. Let me go to the surgical room with her. Pasa la cámara ya. Now we are here with Dr. Angela Gutierrez. Say hello, Angela. Buonasera, Dr. Burato, Dr. Picardo, and all the attendees of the meeting, the Video Keratorefractiva 2019. Uh, I am going to start with the docking. Uh, uh, we are doing the surgery with the Fentolaser C8 LDB Da Vinci, and uh, it allows us to make this circular resections that uh, Dr. Carriazo has uh, explained to you. Continue. I am uh, start to doing the docking. Now we are uh, activated, we are centrated the, the docking. And after centrate the docking, we have to activate the vacuum. Perfect, good. Good, that's you. Now we are activating the vacuum. We have two marks that were aligned with the vacuum. Now we are uh, connecting the head of the fentol laser with a docking. Perfect, good. Now we can focus the, the image 
from the femto Ricardo femto the image of the femto we lost the, the vacuum remove the, suéltalo 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 cógelo de nuevo que les no, no lo levantes suéltalo de ahí we go to repeat because we lost the suction in the, with a, during the procedures we will repeat the same sí, vacío perfect a little water okay now we are going to do it again Now, yes. Now we are centrating the ablation up, up. We are moving up uh, now. Okay, perfect. Show me, show me the, the, the geometrical figure. Okay, perfect. Good. Now it's centrated. Perfect. Good. Now start resection. We could, how you can see here in the screen, after that we have the suction, we can centrate the ablation, the resection, uh, because uh, uh, depending the vacuum, uh, the, the, the pupil can move the, cent the, the centration. Then we can we centrate the, the resection with the pupil. We, this is spent uh, uh, one minute, you can see in the screen, uh, 54 seconds. Remember that this, uh, this resection is 90% of depth. In this case, for example, the resection, the, the wide resection, uh, the more di uh, uh, thickness will be in the inferior uh, temporal quadrant. The patient is laid down, then the, you can see here in your screen, the inferior and left. And we, don't, we are not removing tissues in the superior and nasal uh, quadrant. Now we will we leave uh, five seconds to finish the surgery. In the other surgical room is uh, is placing the stitches in the other patient. Now we finish, we release the suction. I want to point out that this is a photo disruption. And uh, this patient is a patient of 18 years old. Uh, she has a keratoconus grade three, uh, grade three, and uh, she has a keratometry of 54 diopters for 60, and the cornea is thin. It's uh, 430 microns, more or less. She cooperated very well, and uh, now we have all the photo disruption. It's like a kind of trench. If you see, it's not a wedge resection. It's a, a disruption of parallel faces. And then now the thing that we have to do is make the resection of the tissue that is between the canals. Um, OK, let's go to the other uh, room to, to remove the tissues. And I will show you how, in this case, we do that. Okay. Okay, we are here with Dr. Otero in the in this first case. Now, so, so uh, as you can see, we've distributed the sutures uh, evenly. Uh, basically, we did three stitches, three initial stitches: this one, this one, and this one. And then we started distributing the the, the other sutures evenly. We had to reduce a little bit the uh, the um, the intraocular pressure to get a good, uh, you know, uh, an even. Uh, closing of the of the edges. Uh, actually, from now on, it's just like a like a deep lamellar keratoplasty or like a, a penetrating keratoplasty. 
you just go perpendicular uh, into the uh, cornea, and as Cesar said, Dr. Carriazo said, it's a 90% depth. So it is. It has been, you know, quite uh, uh, no, uh, quite easy to, to do because the eye is closed. There's really no uh, no exposure. We try to put the stitches more on the cornea and not next to the limbus. Because if we go to the limbus, the experience is that they tend to, uh, to uh, loosen uh, faster. So, so we try to not to go uh, into the limbus. Sometimes it happens uh, because as you go deep and you follow the, uh, the uh, uh, curve of the, of the needle, it, it just happens. But again, we try to do it on the cornea and not on the limbus. It's important to say, too, that, for example, in this case, uh, the, the, the co-optation of the tissues is adequate. But uh, we need to place another stitches between these stitches in order to not to have, uh, to have a better contact. These, these stitches, these uh, sutures, we can remove early, at the four months, and, uh, and we are re removing the stitches depending on the astigmatism. So yeah, as Dr. Carriazo said, it is very important to distribute the sutures that there's not uh, a big gap between them because we don't want the cornea bulging out. Exactly. We want, again, a very even distribution uh, of the cornea. So here, as you can see, we see the cor cornea bulging out a little bit. So I'm going to go and place a suture in, the, in, in that area to make it uh, much even or, or much better. Okay, we are here with uh, our, our, my love surgeon, Dr. Angela Gutierrez. It's a good friend, good surgeon. And uh, she will show you. Uh, look, look down. Mira un poquito abajo, por favor. Yes, perfect. Now we are here with Dr. Dr. Gutierrez. We are, she uh, will uh, remove the stromal tissues. We are going to explore all the uh, cut, the laser, the circular cut. We can use uh, any spatulum to do that because uh, it's a release very easy. You can see a, a white image in inferior. This is the the bubble of the, the gas of the laser, the the yeah the the explosion of the, the bubbles. This is a little bit with tights, with junctions, but I am going slow. No. What? No, the camera. And uh, um, she's ready. If you have uh, uh, any question, ya la puedes quitar. Then we are going to try to take it from the. Sentate un poquito mejor. Es eso. No, está necesito más arriba. Donde estás trabajando no se ve, tienes que subirla más. Eso ahí, ahí, ahora sí. Now we are in focus, perfect. You can see here, there, how is she, she's removing the tissues. This is 320 degree in resection. You can see that this is different to the other because in the other was 270 because the other has less myopic and less astigmatism. 
Céntralo. Perfect, good. There. That is okay. Okay, we are showing sure. all the uh, tissue that was uh, resected from the uh, channel that we did with the photo. This is this this a circular tissue. Stitches go to, to uh, 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 make a frasco que va para patología. Now uh, we are going to the because uh, this is the way to make the junction between all the between the two gaps, and also if we have something. Uh, a micro perforation or something like that, you should have a, a paracentesis. It's okay. Centrate un poco, baja, sube un poquito la cámara, eso, para arriba, eso, ahí, 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 ahí está perfecto. Es que el borde de arriba no se te da. Ok, perfect. Now we have the resection, it's ready. Now uh, she has to do a paracentesis. A paracentesis. She has to do a paracentesis. She did that, the paracentesis and decreased the intraocular pressure. And now she will put the, the place the suture. The stitches. The stitches. Normally we're going we to put the first stitch in the center of the resection. Exactly, exactly. 90% of the depth. Water. It's a little bit dry. If the if the, if the audience has a question, uh, you can do that. Uh, we can answer. We began to remove the stitches at four months, depending the stigmatism. And uh, normally, uh, 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 one year, we don't have s stitches. After one year. Uh, when you have a good uh, scare, um, we can do cross-linking, we can do PRK, but after one year, then you have a, a stable, a stable the cornea, the refraction. ¿Cómo está ahí? Uh, okay. ¿Carmen? Sí, soy yo. Oh, muy feliz de estar <risa> contigo. Lo mismo digo. Muchas gracias, muchas gracias tantísimo. La, el, el colegio aquí en Milano son 450 personas. Ajá. Eh, son muy contentos de cirugía. Yo he explicado el problema técnico que habíamos tenido al inicio, pero pues sí. ahora lo vemos muy bien. Uh -huh. Io mi ricordo molto di, del vostro istituto, dell'hotel de Kendama, <ride> della stare da voi altri, eccoci, di essere stata con te, con tuo papà, con Sisa, con tuo Ruiz <ride> e anche con Angela, quindi ricordo tutti con affetto. Uh, also, also, also for, for, for us, we have also very little remembrances of you, Riccardo. 
and that's why it was a pleasure to be with you again. I'm going now. I'm going to say hello to the audience. Okay. Grazie Riccardo. Eh, allora, I want to say goodbye. Yes, I want to say goodbye. Me tienen la imagen. I want to say goodbye. All the audience of Video Refractiva, thank you very much. I hope that you really uh, appreciated the technique that we showed to, to you. Remember, it's a technique that is in development, and uh, we believe that can have a real good future in Keratoconus cases. Dr. Cesar Carrezo wants to say something. Yes, it's uh, saying uh, thank you for the attention and the invitation. Uh, we are in the, in the first case, we are finished the stitches. I would like to show you how is uh, the end of the surgery. Um, and I don't know if it, you have uh, in the audience uh, some question. I don't know. If not, no, uh, no, no, no questions. If not, we finish here our surgery, our transmission. Let mm -hmm. me show you the, the, the final surgery. Now it's okay. Final results of the first eye we did. Obviously the suturing takes time. Now this is the final results. The Dr. Otero, here we are with him. Yeah, so we finished. Uh, again, as you can see, the position of the edges is perfect. Uh, sometimes you have to just change one or two stitches. As you can see, there's a nice flattening of the cornea. It looks actually uh, uh, pretty, pretty good. I want to thank you for uh, for listening, for seeing. Uh, it's been a pleasure uh, being with you today. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. And thank you to Lucho and Ricardo.